Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about some relatively incredible but somewhat unexplored discovery that came from the Jefferson Lab located in the US. The lab, whose main purpose is to investigate the nature of matter itself, with the scientists in this lab doing so by trying to learn as much as they can about various subatomic particles. And so if we have the Hubble telescope and the James Webb telescope exploring the universe and looking at the universe from the outside perspective. On the other side, we have scientists from the Jefferson lab doing the opposite, looking on the inside in order to understand how the world on the inside looks like as well. And naturally, there are quite a lot of these labs around the world. A lot of them usually deal with particle physics and use a lot of different particle accelerators to try to get the data. But in this particular case, the scientists in this lab have actually accidentally discovered something amazing about the mass in the universe. At least amazing for the particle physicists. But before I talk about this and what the scientists found here, I actually wanted to bring up several other articles that I did not cover on this channel for a very important reason. And the reason is really simple. There's unfortunately a bit of a divide nowadays between the actual discovery in various scientific papers and how the media portrays it, usually through very clickbaity titles. Now, my apologies for possibly doing this in the past as well, mostly because I didn't really realize how misleading this can actually be in the long term, but here's one good example from just a few months ago. An article from Boston College published this press release claiming to have discovered an elusive particle with the material containing something they refer to as the axial Higgs mode. And all of this got picked up by the media pretty quickly, and this axial Higgs boson eventually even got its own Wikipedia page. Luckily for us, this page no longer exists because this axial Higgs boson is not really what the scientists found in that paper. And the paper itself doesn't even mention any specific particles. As a matter of fact, it mentions something completely unrelated to the iconic Higgs boson. But one thing led to another, and eventually this news spread, with quite a lot of different sources picking it up. And I actually wasn't sure how to cover this, but eventually realized that, well, this is not obviously the first time this happened. And by the way, nothing particularly exciting was discovered in this paper. Nothing revolutionary or nothing related to the Higgs boson. So yeah, axial Higgs boson is not a thing. But speaking of Higgs boson, I'm pretty sure most of you have heard about this, because back in 2012, this was the biggest scientific hype. The discovery of a subatomic particle, the particle that was even described as the gut particle that essentially makes mass in the universe happen. The particle named after Peter Higgs, who predicted its existence back in the days. But the thing is, even back in 2012, this was a bit of a over-exaggeration and a hype that should not have happened. I'm not entirely sure why it went out of control, but the discovery itself was also not super groundbreaking for one important reason. Higgs boson only actually explains 1% of mass of everything. It does not explain all of the mass in the universe. And so even though it was called the gut particle, it's basically only 1% gut particle. It only gives mass to very specific subatomic particles, the ones responsible for the weak force, W and Z boson specifically. Which is one of the reasons why Peter Higgs was really disappointed about how much attention all of this got. But what's a little bit more unfair, and I guess somewhat more surprising, is that the new discovery from the Jefferson lab received practically no attention anywhere, even though it was a much bigger discovery than the Higgs boson. And more importantly, it actually kind of explains 99% of all of the mass in the universe. Alright, let's step a few steps back and talk about the mass. Actually, it's a really strange concept. Now, obviously most of us have some kind of an understanding of what mass is, but I think conceptually it's more or less different for everyone. Now, first of all, weight is not the same as mass. When you weigh yourself on a scale, you're getting mass times acceleration. Not really the same concept. However, your mass is still the same even if you go to space where the acceleration is a little bit different. As a matter of fact, in one of the older videos, I even explored the idea of having a tiny object orbit around you because both you and the object will have mass. And so if you're in space and you put an object relatively close to you, it eventually can acquire an orbit around you. That older video should be somewhere in the description. And obviously, as the object becomes more massive, it sort of acquires more gravity and starts attracting objects even more. The most extreme example in this case is of course a black hole. An object whose mass is just way way too much. Even the light cannot escape it. But the question is still, so okay, what exactly is mass though? Where is it coming from? 
Well, I guess one way to answer this is to look inside the atoms and inside the particles that all these objects are made from. For example, here's a helium atom. We have the electron cloud around it, but a lot of its mass is concentrated in the middle where you see two red protons and two neutrons. The mass of the electron in this case can generally be ignored, it's relatively small. And so it looks like most of the mass in this atom comes from the protons and the neutrons. But then if you start zooming in even more, you'll discover that both the proton and the neutron are made out of their own subatomic particles. We refer to them as quarks. For the protons and the neutrons, the quarks are up quarks and down quarks. This here is a proton, this here is a neutron. A very very small difference, with this being a result of the weak force. But we've discussed this in one of the previous videos, that should be in the description. Okay, so well, where's the mass though? Well, here's the thing. When the scientists a few decades ago started to measure the mass of these quarks, specifically the up quarks and down quarks separately, and they did so by conducting a lot of particle accelerator experiments where they collide a lot of different particles, creating subatomic particles and observing the effects, they quite shockingly discovered that the up quarks and down quarks only represent a tiny fraction of the total mass. Yet the proton itself and the neutron itself were much 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 more massive than they should have been if it was just the up quarks and the down quarks. So where is the mass from? And well, in the last few decades the scientists were finally able to kind of answer this. With the work from the Jefferson lab right here, more or less answering this once and for all. And more importantly, even creating a beautiful simulation to kind of help us visualize all of this and to help us understand where most of the mass or 99% of all of the mass in the universe, and we're talking about mass inside various stars, inside various gas clouds, and in pretty much most of the objects out there, comes from. And the actual answer and the result are kind of counterintuitive and somewhat difficult to understand. It comes from the gluons connecting everything together. It comes from these squiggly lines. And this particular image doesn't really do it justice, because most of the mass of the entire proton and the neutron is in these squiggly lines. This mass comes from the energy connecting and holding the quarks together. Or at least that's one way of thinking about it. The much better way of visualizing this is through this new simulation. So here's how we previously imagined the proton. We have three quarks interacting with one another, with essentially a force holding them together. But in reality, the proton and the neutron would probably look something like this, with all of these white patches you see, essentially creating these large clouds of gluons that then carry the strong force, which essentially creates the mass. And this by itself is, to me at least, kind of mind-blowing. And since individual quarks in this case are only responsible for less than 1% of the total mass, it's really these gluons that create pretty much all of the mass around us, not Higgs boson, not the tiny quarks inside of our bodies, but the strong force holding them together. But wait, it gets even more counterintuitive and weird. It's not the gluons themselves, it's the energy of binding. And I guess more specifically, the motion of the gluons and their speed. By themselves, each individual gluon doesn't actually have much mass at all. When the scientists originally measured individual gluons through various particle accelerator experiments, they determined that its mass was absolutely minuscule. So once again, where is the mass coming from? Well, it turns out, gluons are mostly massless at short distances. But as they travel further away, they tend to acquire mass. Or I guess to be more exact, they acquire the binding energy, which then binds the quarks together. And in this case, the scientists believe it's because the quarks tend to gather the clouds of gluons as they move across larger distances. And so even though the mass of the individual quark is small and the mass of individual gluon is minuscule as well, the motion of the gluons creates all the mass on the inside. And so this weird cloud you see, that's gluons moving around creating the mass inside the proton. And honestly, even today, I personally have trouble sort of wrapping my head around this. How exactly can mass be formed by the unusual interaction of these gluons and essentially by them just moving around and then somehow binding quarks together and thus generating the mass in the entire universe. 99% of all of the mass. Which then obviously generates things like gravity, which generates a lot of other effects we observe around the universe. Very hard to conceptualize, somewhat difficult to understand, but thanks to the scientists from the Jefferson lab and the MIT, we now have a slightly better visualization allowing us to kind of see this 
and allowing us to kind of understand what's happening, at least to some extent. But that's actually not the new discovery. The most recent discovery, from I guess just a few weeks ago, is more or less accidental. And it's from this study right here you can find in the description below. And all this comes from a completely different experiment that was actually shooting various electrons at various protons and neutrons, designed to study proton and neutron spin. In other words, the scientists were actually studying something entirely different, but they were doing so for nearly a decade. And so over this period of time, they've collected a huge amount of data about protons, electrons and neutrons. And recently they realized that they could actually combine all of this information to extract the overall strong force coupling and how it affects protons and neutrons on the inside. In simpler terms, by combining all of this data from these experiments, they were actually able to see what's happening to these squiggly lines. And specifically, they were able to calculate how these strong force changes as the distance between quarks grows as well. Mostly because it's still not entirely clear if the force grows exponentially, if it stays the same, or if it maybe decreases because of the distances. And in this case, the scientists were able to calculate the strong force at the largest distances yet, determining that at larger distances, the strong force seems to actually stay the same. Whereas at shorter distances, it's relatively weak. Which also proves that gluons in this case also get their mass from the force of coupling. Or basically that 99% of all of the mass in the universe is formed by the force that's holding things together. And in case of these squiggly lines, once they get far enough away from each other, the force between them will stay relatively same. But even though this is a pretty major breakthrough, it still is far from actually explaining everything about mass to us and there are still so many unanswered questions. As a matter of fact, not so long ago, we've even discussed some of these potential problems discovered in the particle physics that could maybe rewrite some of these ideas. But at least for now, it definitely looks like the idea of mass in the universe is more or less understood by the scientists and seems to come from the force between gluons acquired through their motion which binds subatomic particles together. Something that's still kind of difficult to imagine and even more difficult to understand but at least for now, seems to be physically proven and described in some of these new studies. Although I'm sure once new discoveries are made, I'll be coming back and talking more about this, because personally I find this topic really fascinating, even though it's super counterintuitive. And if you'd like to learn more about the research and some of these new discoveries, including these visualizations, check out the MIT video in the description below. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by doing channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.